I've made some videos in the past uh, leaning towards the anti-misandry movement, and this is going to be another one of those videos. Uh, I'm going to read you a chapter from a book called Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. There's a chapter in the book that has a lot to do with the anti-misandry movement, and I'm just going to read it because there's no way that I could summarize or say anything close to um, how intense the chapter is. Uh, I guess I should put a little warning before I read this. It's pretty graphic. It's extremely graphic. It also has some pretty intense um, molestation scenes. There's really no other way to put it. So I'm going to go ahead and read this chapter. So it's a pretty long read. I wouldn't recommend staring at my face while I'm reading this because not much is going to be going on. So go ahead and open your solitaire, have a couple games, and enjoy the chapter. It's called Speaking Bitterness, a story about Comrade Snarky. <clears throat> From the minute he sat down, we tried to explain. We don't allow men. This is a women-only safe space. The purpose of our group is to nurture and empower women with a sense of privacy, to allow women to speak freely without being questioned or judged. We need to exclude men because they inhibit women. Male energy intimidates and humiliates women. To men, a woman is either a virgin or slut, a mother or a whore. When we ask him to get out, of course he plays dumb. He says to call him Miranda. We respect his choice, the effort and desire he's put into attaining the physical appearance of being female, but this space, we tell him in a gentle, sensitive way, this space is only for women born women. He was born Miranda Joyce Williams. He says this and snaps open his little pink lizard skin pocketbook. He takes out a driver's license. With a long pink fingernail, he slides the license across the table, tapping where there's a letter F under the category of sex. The state may recognize his new gender, we tell him, but we choose not to. Many of our members suffered childhood traumas regarding men. They fear being reduced to their bodies, being used as objects. These are issues he can never understand, being born male. He says, I was born female. Somebody in the group says, can you show us your birth certificate? Miranda says, of course not. Someone else says, are you menstruating? And Miranda says, not this minute. He's playing with a rainbow-colored scarf tied around his neck, twisting and pulling it preening in a caricature of female nervous behavior. He's playing with a sparkling, shimmering scarf draped around his shoulders, letting it fall down behind him to hang from his elbows. He's combing his fingers through the long fringe at each end. He pulls a little more scar scarf to one side, then the other. He crosses his legs, one knee over the other, then the bottom one on top. He lifts and folds the fur coat in his lap. Turning it, he pets the fur with his open hand, his fingernails together, painted pink and bright as jewelry. His lips and shoes and handbag, his fingernails and watch band, they're all pretty pink as a redhead's asshole. Someone in the group gets up, glaring. She says, what's the goddamn point? Cramming her knitting and bottled water into her tote bag, she says, I look forward to this all week, and now it's ruined. Miranda just sits there, his eyes tinted under long, thick lashes, his eyes floating in blue-green pools of eyeliner. He tubes red lipstick onto his lipstick. He smears blusher on top of his blusher. Mascara on mascara. His cropped blouse rides up on his chest. The pink silk of it seems to hang off the two points of his nipples, each breast roughly the same size as his face, both ballooning off the tanned ripples of his ribcage. His stomach showing tight and tanned. It's a male stomach. He's a total sexed off fantasy. The kind of woman only a man would become. For a rap group, Miranda says, he expected a little more rap. We just look at him. This silly man, this Miranda, he's every male fantasy brought to life in a kind of Frankenstein monster of stereotypes. The perfect big round breasts, the hard muscle of long thighs, the mouth a, perf a perfect pout greasy with lipstick, the pink leather skirt too short and tight for anything but sex. He speaks with the breathy voice of a little girl or a movie starlet. A huge gush of air for what little com for what little sound comes out. It's the kind of whispery voice Cosmopolitan magazine teaches girls to use to make listening men lean closer. We just sit here, nobody talking, nobody sharing. You just can't be honest knowing there's a penis under the table. 
Even in the middle of Frida Kahlo and George O'Keefe posters, Apple Cinnamon Candles, the bookstore's Calico Cat. Okay, Miranda says. Then I'll start. Miranda, his bleach blonde hair is piled beauty parlor tall, beauty parlor tall, stiff with spray and wired with bobby pins. There's this guy at work who Miranda just fell train wreck in love with. The guy won't flirt back. He's just this totally cute number, a slick-haired junior sales associate who drives a Porsche. He's married, but Miranda knows there's sheer animal interest on the guy's side. This one time, after work, Miranda says, the guy came out and put his hand, and we all just stare. The guy put his hand on Miranda's arm and asked about going out for a drink. Miranda's arms are thin, tanned muscle with no jiggle to them, smooth as tan plastic. He giggles. Miranda actually giggles. He rolls his eyes at the ceiling. Miranda says how the sales associate from work drove the two of them to this very dark bar, the kind where you'd go to not be noticed by... This is so male. All this me, me, me stuff all night. We come here to get away from men, from husbands who won't pick up dirty socks, husbands who slap us around and cheat on us, fathers disappointed we're not boys, Stepfathers who diddled us, brothers who bullied us, bosses, priests, traffic cops, doctors. Most time we don't allow crosstalk, but somebody in the group says, Miranda, and Miranda stops yakking. We tell him that consciousness raising is rooted in complaint, what so many people call a bitch session. In communist China, in the years after Mao's revolution, an important part of building a new culture was allowing people to complain about their past. At first, the more they complained, the worse the past seemed. But by venting, people could start to resolve the past. By bitching and bitching and bitching, they could exhaust the drama of their own horror stories, grow bored. Only then could they accept a new story for their lives and move forward. This is why we come here every Wednesday night to this bookstore back room without windows to sit in folding metal chairs around a big square table. The revolution called this speaking bitterness. Miranda shrugged his shoulders. His eyebrow raised, he shakes his head, and says he doesn't have any horror stories. He sighs and smiles and bats his eyes, and someone in the group says, Then we don't want you here. The whole idea of men creating perfect robot women for their own pleasure, it happens every day. The most beautiful women you see in public, none of them are for real. They're just men perpetuating their perverted stereotypes of women. Just the oldest story in the world. There's a penis on every page of Cosmopolitan magazine if you know where to look. Miranda says how we're not very welcoming, and somebody says, you're not a woman. We meet in the women-only safe, safe gathering space behind the women's book cooperative. No way do we want our space polluted by oppressive phallic yang energy. Being a woman is special. It's sacred. This isn't just some club you can join. You can't just get a shot of estrogen and show up here. Miranda says, you just need a little makeover to pretty yourself up. Men, they just don't get it. Being a woman is more than just wearing makeup and high heels. This kind of sex mimicry, this gender parroting, it's the worst insult. A man thinks all he has to do is put on lipstick and cut off his dick and that makes him a sister. Someone gets up from her chair, someone else gets up and they both start around the table. Miranda asks, what are they planning? And a third woman stands up, says, a major makeover. Miranda's pink fingernails go into her pocketbook. He takes out a canister of hot pepper spray and says he's not afraid to use it. He puts a silver rape whistle between his pink lips. Someone else goes around the table to, table to stand too close to him, his hand clutch white around the pepper spray, then somebody in the group says, let's see your tits. In our group, we don't have a leader. The rules of consciousness raising don't allow crosstalk. No one can challenge the experience of another member. Everyone gets a turn to talk. Miranda, the silver rape whistle, drops out of his mouth his Paris lips blown up with collagen, the pout of a fashion model saying, Thursday. Miranda says we have to be joking. It's so typical. Men want all the perks of being female, but none of the bullshit. Somebody else says, no really, show us. We're all female here. It's not like we haven't seen tits before. Somebody standing close, she reaches toward the top button on Miranda's pink blouse. The blouse is pink, silk, tented over his breasts. It's cropped to show his stomach flat and smooth, and hangs in folds over his belted skirt. His pink lizard skin belt is no bigger than a dog collar. One of his pink hands slaps the woman away. When no one else makes a move, then Miranda lets out a little sigh, 
With all of us watching, he undoes the top button himself. 